on. Look both ways before crossing the studio. Okay. Ah! What? I don't understand. Okay. Ah. Ah. <laughs> okay. Here goes nothing. the list for your respect? Well, God, for sure. As the one who created you and the entire universe, God tops the list. Up next, your mom or dad or the grown-ups who take care of you every day, they deserve your respect, even if they just told you to get off your screen. After all, God put them in charge. Number three, your teachers and coaches and other leaders make the list too. You may not always agree with them, but God's put them in place to look out for you. Okay, so respect. Check, check, and check. List done. Except it's not. Because when we follow Jesus, respect for others breaks out of the box. Respect isn't just for those in charge. It's a way to show others they are important by what you say and do. That goes for friends and family. But Jesus showed that our love and respect should extend to anyone in God's image, which adds up to, well, everyone. Jesus included those who were looked over and left out. Jesus said to respect even the people you don't get along with. And Jesus showed that the ultimate mark of respect is to give someone your time and attention. True respect is more than a list. It's a lifestyle. And when others see how you love everyone and put others first, they can see God shining through you. That's why respect is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud.
take that. Oh, thanks, Zeke. This week, we're talking about respect. While we take a look at the story of some guys who weren't used to being picked first for anything. Amaya, what is this? <laughs> hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke, and we're talking about respect just showing others they are important by what you say and do. So, I've got something for you. Okay. What do you see? Trash. That's what I thought too, until I saw what my friend Abby does. Well, do I get to see too? Absolutely. I think she deserves a drum roll. Hey, Abby, we're so excited to have you. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so I make visuals to help people tell their stories. What kind of visuals? It can be anything. It can be a mural or string art or old clothes. And sometimes I make giant sculptures out of trash. That's cool. Is that what we're doing today? Actually, I had something else in mind. You gotta really look at your materials. So try it. Um, it's crinkly. Yeah, exactly. It's crinkly, kind of like a peony petal is crinkly. A uh, peony It's a kind of flower. And so see this cardboard, how it's thick, but it's soft. So you can curve it around like a leaf. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. Well, what about, how about this one? Oh, cool. See how in the center, it's like the shape of the inside of an anemone. Uh, and then a what? <laughs> it's a flower, Z. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I was thinking some kind of sea creature or something. Well, we could totally do that, too. But today, I thought we'd make a recycle bin bouquet. I love it. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. Hey, this is something you can do at home, so follow along. So we're going to start with some of that trash that we dumped out. We've got a piece of an old shopping bag here. And again, you can feel how it can start to feel like a petal. A petal. Some old magazine clippings. What is this gonna be? That's gonna be the center of a sunflower. With this on top, the inside Ooh. of a cardboard box. And we're gonna use that egg carton that you found. Hey. <laughs> Pass those on back now that you've felt them. And I'm gonna show you what our first step is. We're gonna start with this guy, because as you can see, we got a yellow bag, so that's gonna be our sunflower petals. Right. The first thing that you wanna do is cut a circle. And then you're gonna go through and make all the petals, one cut after another. Mm. So you can see that takes a little bit of time. So I went on and cut petals for you guys so we can make flowers even faster today. Thank you, <laughs> appreciate it. 
So you can pick up these and what we'll start to do is take them and just like we were feeling that paper, start to bend them like petals of a real flower. Because okay. flowers aren't perfect. They have petals going every which way and that's exactly what this paper lets you do. Okay, so bend, so you can bend them up. Hmm. And take your next piece and do the same thing. How's that? That looks great. That looks to me like a flower out in the wild. <laughs> so when you've done that with both of them, then we get to glue them together. So you guys think you're ready to glue? Yes, I'm ready. Almost. <laughs> So you'll take your bigger one, that's your bottom. So you'll take your bottom flower and use your glue gun and be careful, it gets really hot. So remember, you're gonna wanna have an adult for this. So you just make a ring of glue and press the top flower down so that they stick together. And that's it, you got your two layers of flower right there. Oh, I'm so excited to make glue. There you go, be careful. Thank you. Awesome. We'll pass this back down. We're going to glue some more, though. How do you feel? I think mine's looking really good. It already looks like a flower, right? Yeah. Oh, All right. So now we're going to get to the green part that you asked about, <laughs> our little magazine clipping. And you want to do little tiny, tiny snips. So you can see that definitely takes a lot of time. So I went on and did that one for you, too. And you have this little thing that you can start to do the same thing with. Kind of crunch them around. Don't be afraid to wad it up because, again, flowers aren't exactly perfect. All the little pieces go in all different directions. So that's, you want it to ruffle up. How's it feel? It's looking good, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do the same thing with the hot glue gun. And you'll do a tiny little bit of glue. My turn. How does it look? <gasps> there, there it is. It looks the center of the flower. <laughs> so there it is. You've got your flower already going. But wow. now, you know how the center of a sunflower has like a big lumpy bit mm -hmm. in the middle? All the seeds and stuff. Exactly. So that's what we're going to make with this. So you see how the center of the cardboard has all that lumpy, bumpy stuff? Mm -hmm. That perfectly makes the center of sunflower where all the seeds are. So we cut it at an angle so we can roll it up like this. This is where it gets fun. You take the big end, roll. So you guys see we're making a big round center for the inside of our sunflower and it's starting to look all nice and lumpy like the seed part, right? It's going. <laughs> yep, and then just glue down that little tail. And the next thing you'll do after that is on the flat side, so you guys can see we're gonna glue it down in the center of our flower. Right in the middle of the green bit, like this. There you go. That's the trick. Not too okay, much, thanks. but just enough. Alrighty. Yeah, that looks perfect. <gasps> Yay. There's the center of it. All our flower needs is a stem, right? Right. So what we have that we use for that, this is some floral wire, which means it's green already on the outside. You can get that at a craft store, but you could use any wire that you guys have at your house. And so what I did is I went on and attached a little piece of cardboard to the top because we're going to use the end of our egg carton and it has a hole in it. So what we're going to do is put a little glue right around the bottom. So just like stringing a bead or threading a needle, you're gonna put that wire right through that hole and pull that square down into the base of it. Pull it in nice and snug. Got it. Perfect. And then we'll attach it to our flower. So Zeke, while you're doing that, the next step is to put the glue right here on these things that look like petals. That's what's going to hold our flower all together. And then your flower goes on like a hat. <laughs> and that looks great. Perfect glue. There you go. Wow. <laughs> you can bend your flower any way you want so it looks like it's out in the field <laughs> and blowing in the breeze. And there it is. Your finished sunflower from that. trash. Wow. 
Wow, this is lovely. Yeah, it's amazing how you looked at a piece of junk and saw this. And what's super cool is we can do the same thing with people too. Like people flowers? More like if you really see people and get to know them, then you can, you know, see things that are overlooked, see the texture in everybody, see all of their quirks that makes every single person uncommonly beautiful. And that is exactly where we're going today. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the third book of the New Testament, Luke. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into a relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he was baptized in the Jordan River. God spoke from heaven. This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. After 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus began to go from town to town, teaching and healing. Even though he's God's son, he didn't start out in the capital city of Jerusalem. He didn't go to the, the fine homes of the religious leaders. Instead, Jesus met with ordinary, everyday people on hillsides and by the lake shore. And he chose some of the most unlikely people to be his closest friends and followers. Four of these men were uneducated fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. One morning after a long night of fishing, Peter and his friends had caught exactly zero fish. What a drag, cleaning the nets without a single fish to show for it. I may fall asleep right here. This morning, the fishermen weren't alone on the beach. Jesus was standing on the lakeshore, and though it was early, a huge crowd had gathered. They were so eager to get close to Jesus that they jostled and shoved, backing him right up to the water. But instead of pushing back, Jesus simply stepped over into Peter's boat and said, go out a little way from shore. Now, if you're Peter, you're probably feeling a whole bunch of things. On the one hand, after fishing all night, you really want to get home and go to bed. But on the other hand, this unusual teacher has singled you out of the crowd to help him. I mean, you're used to people just ignoring you or <laughs> wrinkling their noses at the fishy smell you can't get out of your clothes. With all those things racing through his head, Peter did just what Jesus asked and guided the boat a little way out from shore. When Jesus was done speaking, he turned to Peter and said, Go out into deep water. Let down the nets so you can catch some fish. Master, uh, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Now, even though Peter couldn't help protesting a little, he already respected Jesus' authority. Uh, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Peter guided the boat out into deep water, and he and Andrew let down their nets, expecting more disappointment. Instead, whole schools of fish seemed to appear out of nowhere. Oh, uh, Andrew, uh, pull harder. The net is going to burst. Peter called out to his fishing partners back on shore. James, John, bring the boat. It took everyone to reel in the nets. Both boats overflowed with floundering fish. Back on shore, Peter was so overwhelmed, he didn't give a single thought to that massive haul of fish. Instead, he threw himself down at Jesus' feet. Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Jesus smiled at the group of ragtag fishermen. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. The crowd must have been shocked to see Jesus choose these common fishermen as close friends and disciples. Right away, Peter, Andrew, James, and John hauled their boats up on shore. They didn't even stop to clean and sell all those fish. Jesus wasn't finished calling disciples. One day, he stopped at a booth where a man named Matthew was collecting taxes. Okay, now, 
first thing you got to understand, no one talked to a tax collector unless they had to. These men were hired to collect taxes from their own people for the Roman government. They would charge extra to cover their own salaries. I mean, everybody hated them for it. But Jesus walked right up to Matthew. Come, follow me. Everyone was shocked, including Matthew. But Matthew didn't hesitate. Something inside him just recognized that Jesus was special. Mm -hmm. He got up immediately to follow Jesus and even invited Jesus to come to a dinner party at his house. At Matthew's home, Jesus shared a meal with tax collectors and others who were seen as outcasts. The religious leaders were shocked. They grumbled to Jesus' disciples. Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard what they were saying. Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to turn away from their sins. Jesus wasn't worried about collecting the right followers or popular friends. Instead, he included everyone. Jesus chose to spend his time with people who saw how much they needed him. Instead of those, like the religious leaders, who thought they were too important to need help. The end. I wonder who Jesus would talk to if he came to my school. That is a great question. It's like Jesus' teaching went beyond anything anyone has ever heard before. So, what's, what's our, our part, part in the story? story? Every single person ever is made in God's image. That means everybody you meet is important and worthy of love. Just like Jesus, we can choose to include the people who get overlooked and left out. Maybe people who aren't popular. Or people who are new or different. Even people who have messed up. Yeah, like there's this girl in my school who eats by herself at a table in the corner every day. I couldn't buy her to have lunch with me. Yeah, and there's this kid in my grade who always gets paid last for stuff. I could have him be my lab partner in science class. I think you guys have got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Include people who are left out. Hey, do we get to make more flowers? Oh, already on it. <gasps> wow. I still cannot wrap my head around how this came from a pile of trash. <laughs> you just gotta keep your eyes open and take a good look at all the cool things you find. And the people you meet. Yeah, there's always something amazing to discover. Exactly. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next, next time. time. Oh, this is awesome. This is so amazing. What did you make this out of? Oh, it's a food box and then a, food... a little potato bag that inside the center. And check out, these are the bottoms of an egg carton too. <gasps>
Actually, the extra R comes from the original Roman calendar when it was called Februarius, but most people don't pronounce the first R because it produces a cluster of consonants that isn't commonly used in modern English. Well, some of us Febru do. Also, a roux <laughs> is something used in cooking to thicken cream sauces or gravy, for those mm -hmm. of you that don't. You know what, why are we even talking about this? Because it's February, oh and I'm making a bowl of fruit loops. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be tasty. Sticks to your ribs. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> You're not gonna eat that, are you? Absolutely. <laughs> Did someone say manners? Oh, Melinda Manners, I'm so glad that you're here. Happy to be here. I go wherever the wind or the charge of my electric bicycle takes me. Oh, well, for those of you who haven't met Melinda, she's an expert on all things proper and mannerly. Indeed. Yes, now tell Brandon the proper way to pronounce the month we are currently in. Ah, oh, the proper pronunciation for the second month of the year is February. I know that. Because I of... Not that. Let's see. Just, just looking for these. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> How did this get in there? That's hilarious. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Brew. That is not why. People... They were going to call the month February gravy, but cooler heads prevailed. <laughs> I, I think this show has run a bit off course. Oh, well. When you don't know which way to turn, look for the sign to allay your concern. A sign? Of course. When you are lost or off course, there are often signs to help point you in the right direction. You mean like road signs? I usually don't pay any attention to those. Oh. Oh, you mustn't do that. Oh, no, 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 no! No? No. Without road signs, how would one know the rules of the road? No. Rules are there for us to follow when you run, when you drive, or when you eat a marshmallow. What are the rules for eating a marshmallow? Let's play a game. Oh, look over there. What? <laughs> Voila! <laughs> Wow! Amazing. This game is called Name the Road Sign. Oh, awesome! Oh, really? Road signs will be displayed on the video monitor and you will take turns to see how many signs you can identify. Uh -huh. John will go first. Great! Spin. And start! Okay, uh, uh, stop sign. Yield sign. Railroad crossing. No left turn. Pedestrian crossing. School zone. Narrow bridge. Merge! <laughs> Construction zone, bicycle crossing, divided highway, low clearance, one way, T intersection, no U turn. Oh! What? Excellent work, John. <laughs> you certainly know how to respect the rules Thanks. of the road. Yes, yes. 15 points. Yes! Brandon, and go. Okay, um, uh, look in all directions. Um, no, um,. Uh, oh, whirlpool ahead. Uh, uh, broken circle. Uh, uh, circle. Traffic circle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, look both ways before you cross the street. Um, uh, parallel lines. Oh no, no uh, parallel parking. Uh, both ways when you. Oh, two-way traffic. Ah. Oh, uh, yeah. H. The letter H. Halt. It, it's like a, it, it's a, it's like a stop sign, but it's a halt sign. Halt. No. Um, okay, uh, 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 helicopter landing pad with a helicopter H is a hiya, hello, howdy do, stranger. Welcome to our town. It's Time is up. That was, of course, hospital. And a bonus point for John. That's no fair. His were way easier. No. Very well. Let's do another round. Right. This time oh. you will both be allowed to answer at once. Yes. And begin. Okay. Spaghetti oh. Junction. Uh, only drive in reverse. Oh, no, no, mm -hmm. that, that's... Oh, steep clip. Oh, Use caution. Wow. Uh, oh, low well, flying that... airplane. Oh, that's a... That... Alpaca crossing. Llama crossing. Oh, Unicorn uh, crossing. Oh, the, the one with the... Camel no. crossing. No, no, oh. I'll still with the one... No with right the... turn of driving a camel. 
Warning, killer mosquitoes. Oh, Chickens playing chicken. Oh. And one more. Wait, I know this one. It's, 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 it's man in an orange circle. Awesome hair alert. Uh, 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 silhouettes waving. I am not good at this. It is, of course. It's Bible story Bible time. Bible story time with Kelly. Kellen, what's up, friend? Not much. How's it going over there? Yeah, pretty swell. You got a Bible story for us today? I do indeed. And we'll be telling it today with Laundry Theater. Our story comes from the book of Luke. Luke wrote about Jesus when he started healing people and teaching them. People were starting to follow Jesus and listen to his ideas about God and how we should live in the world. One day, Jesus had been teaching people from a boat that belonged to a fisherman named Simon Peter. Jesus was sitting down in the boat while he taught people on shore. After he had finished speaking, Jesus told Peter to take the boat out into deep water and put his nets down to catch some fish. Peter told Jesus that they had been fishing all night and hadn't caught a thing. But because Jesus had asked him to, he would. Even though Peter probably doubted that they would catch any fish at all, he had great respect for Jesus and his teaching. And because of that, he was willing to do what Jesus asked. After Peter and his fellow fishermen went out to the deep water, they put down their nets and they caught a massive amount of fish. It was so large, the nets began to break. The catch was so big, Peter had to have another boat come and help take some of the fish. There were so many fish, the boats began to sink. When Peter saw how many fish they had caught, he was amazed. He dropped to his knees, he was scared, he told Jesus to go away. He didn't feel good enough to be around someone so amazing. But Jesus told Peter not to be afraid and that from now on, instead of fishing for fish, Peter would fish for people. Simon Peter left everything behind to follow Jesus. Two other men, James and John, also saw what had happened that day and they decided to follow Jesus too. These were ordinary guys, fishermen. They weren't rich or powerful, probably didn't feel like they belonged, but Jesus was going to use them to change the world. And not long after that, Jesus met someone else, a tax collector named Levi, who was more commonly known as Matthew. Now, back then, tax collectors were generally not liked by people. But when Jesus saw Matthew, Jesus told him to follow him. And Matthew immediately got up and left everything and followed Jesus. Then Matthew threw Jesus a banquet or a party. And there were other people there, other tax collectors. And some of the religious leaders were not too happy about that. They complained and asked why Jesus would eat with tax collectors and sinners. Well, Jesus told them that it is not the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick. Jesus wasn't looking for the people who thought they were right with God to follow him. He was looking for those who needed help. The end. Great story, Kellen. Yeah, it's pretty cool to read and think about Jesus finding his first disciples like Peter and Matthew who become an incredible part of the story of Jesus and the work that he did. Yeah, and the disciples weren't super extraordinary people either. At first glance, no. Some of them were just ordinary fishermen, people that may have felt left out or at least felt like they weren't important, or people like Matthew that others really didn't like. Matthew probably felt like an outsider, but Jesus was able to look beyond what everyone else saw and he was able to use people that may have felt left out to change the world. Thanks a lot, Kellen. No problem, I'll see you guys next time. You know, I'm so glad that Jesus includes imperfect people because I'm way imperfect. Yeah, no kidding, me too. Jesus always included people who were left out. Absolutely. Oh, oh in fact, reveal the question. Oh, when have you felt left out? 
And maybe you didn't get invited to a friend's sleepover, but mm. all of your other friends did. Yeah, or maybe you like different things than some of the people you go to church with. Uh, maybe people like to play games that you're not good at, like uh, name the road sign. Oh, oh, did you not like that game? I barely got any of them right. Uh, well, yeah, I did notice that. <laughs> hey, you know what, next time you get to pick the game. Thank you, John. No problem. If you ever feel left out, tell someone. Find someone you trust and, and tell them what you're feeling. And maybe they can help. Mm. It's easy to feel left out. But remember, there are people in your life who care for you. And there's a God that created the whole world who cares for you too. Oh, and be on the lookout for others who might feel left out. Mm -hmm. You can be like Jesus to them by including them and showing them God's love. So true. <laughs> what? True. True. Taru. Let's get it? What I'm saying? Why are you saying it like because that? Because of the roo earlier. You, you know, roo, airy. Roo. Yeah, the... Well, that's all the time we have today, but we'll see you next time on the so and so show. Remember the roo at the beginning of the show? We had, you had the roo out. You kept, we argued about February. Roo. I feel left out. Push my spoon away, away from, from me. me. Yes, and now enjoy. <laughs> oh. Uh, what do you call an Australian roux what? made by a kangaroo? What? <laughs> a roux roux. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs>